Hey guys, it's time to look at this month's news for your buy to let property tax. I'm going to go through all the latest tabloids to find out what they have been writing about and how it affects you. More importantly though guys, I am of course going to be writing about the solutions that you can benefit from and we've already created some videos which will be appearing above my head each time we talk about a tabloid. So let's get into the detail for this month. Okay, so let's get started in this month's edition. And the first paper I'm going to read is on which, not exactly a tabloid, I appreciate, but nevertheless, they do produce some brilliant pieces of, of articles. And it talks about should you invest your pension pot into buy to let properties. So pension pots, typically, um, you would accumulate a, some funds, put that into your pension, and once you come to the age of 55, some people are taking 25% or indeed more from their pension pots to invest into buy to let property investments. Now, there are some pros and cons, and interestingly enough, which have done a great article on the pros and cons of using your pensions to invest into buy to let properties. And it's worth having a read, and they aren't, the URL will always be placed below this description. But retirement savers tend to buy buy to let. And, you know, the fact that years and years ago it was great. Um, buy to let property investments have obviously taken a hit on legislation, as well as things like SDLT 3% surcharge. Um, there are some other tax implications that you will now, Section 24, whether you buy a property in your own name versus a limited company. I'm not going to the detail about Section 24, I have to say. But it does give you a nice thing about, well, if you uh, take your 25% lump sum, and then invest it into buy to let property investments. Is it such a good idea? So have a feel free to read this article, some good insights before you make the decision of using your pension pots to invest in buy to let property portfolios. So I've created an online portal where it'll help you to understand how you can save SDLT when you're buying a property, value added tax when you're buying a commercial building or indeed refurbishing a property, the income tax and corporation tax that you can save when making profits on your property portfolio. So make sure you enroll today and start learning how you can save tax on your property portfolio. Uh, the next article I wanted to read was from The Telegraph and it says property investors snapping up properties while British landlords forced out the market. Indeed, if you think about the Tories and what they've done, and in worse still, if Labour get in, what would happen to property investors like you and I? Well, I know for full well that they'll give us more legislation headaches in the future. Uh, without making this a political thing, though, I think we do need to consider that the whole thing of uh, buy to let is being hammered if you're a UK investor, but if you're a foreigner, Okay, you've got things like CGT and non-residency rates and so on like that. But ultimately, they may not have a need for a mortgage. So Section 24 doesn't affect them. They may invest using a limited company anyway. So it's tax efficient from their perspective. Ultimately, it's a better tax haven for them. And whilst we're growing and the Warren Buffett's now uh, comes into play, his saying was, whilst People grow fearful, you should grow greedy. And while people grow greedy, you should grow fearful. Well, I think it's the UK landlords and property investors that potentially are feeling a little bit frightened by all these changes. And it's shown because of the strength of the pound, which is what this article talks about in their article, uh, again from the Telegraph, that investors from abroad are finding very, very cheap deals to be buying. Right now, I think it is very much a buyer's market. Why? Because the buyers that are out there from a UK landlord or buy-to-let property investor, or indeed UK homeowners that want to upscale or downscale their homes are frightened because of Brexit, the tax changes and all, all the headaches that go with it. So if you're a foreigner, it's likely that you're going to get good deals because you've got money, you don't need a mortgage, and you have got good exchange rates at the minute as well. So great article to read, just if you're interested in terms of what's happening in the marketplace and why uh, you've now got a new competitor 
but not from the ones you expected, the person behind you. It's the person that is now investing on behalf of a foreigner. Uh, the Financial Times leads the way with uh, Labour Drops plan to allow tenants to buy out private landlords. Jeremy Corbyn was um, quoted as saying that he is going to make it harder for landlords. He wants properties to be that of the person, the everyday people and not of the investor. Which basically meant that he's going to write legislation to make it easier for people to discount uh, your properties as a buy to let uh, investor or landlord so that they could buy your home from you at a discounted rate. Um, he's backtracked on that, which is not the first time, um, but he's backtracked on that particular uh, type of legislation change and will probably attack different types of legislation. So it's good to see that he has backtracked on that particular one because that would just be a total nightmare for local authorities to, house, uh, to, to have there. And indeed, there'll be lots of lawsuits going on, I'm sure, in terms of the buy to let investors. Um, so good news, really, from that perspective. Um, we talk about, again, the Telegraph. The Telegraph have done quite a few good articles this month, as usual. And in this one, it says here, how to invest in buy to lets where your 25,000 will earn highest returns. Now, if you're in London, you're thinking 25,000, are you kidding? Um, yes, indeed, you can buy properties for 100,000 pounds and get a mortgage for 75,000. Yes, it's scarily true, it is possible. You can do it too. Uh, and I'm not gonna finish that advert slogan. Um, but you can get a good mortgage rate as well on Northern. Use those words carefully. No, I'm, by the way, I'm Midlands based, so I'm not too precious about saying Northern. I'm right there on the middle of that boundary. Um, so you can get good uh, return on investments is basically what this uh, is saying. And they, what they've done as well, they've drawn a nice little map. Uh, here we are there, there's a map of where to invest your money. And you'll see there that Stoke-on-Trent, I've been to Stoke-on-Trent, you can buy properties, get this. If you're living in London, you can buy a house in Stoke at the same value as your bin. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm being cynical and funny about that. So people in Stoke, don't please start slating me off. I'm just joking because if you buy anything in London, and you're looking at £100,000, you are not going to get anything at all, is what I'm saying. But you can go to Stoke and buy a house for £50,000. That's right, £50,000. Now, of course, this is talking about you putting in a 25% uh, deposit on a house of £100,000. In Stoke, you can get a pretty nice house for £100,000 for an investment purpose. Um, You've got areas like Mansfield, even Nottingham was kind of pretty much uh, hovering over this this uh, one as well. Uh, Nottingham is getting a bit more expensive because of the development that is going around Nottingham at the minute. But again, have a look at this particular uh, article from the Telegraph to find out if there are better areas to invest in than what you're currently doing right now. Um, I'm just going to move that, and that's gone. I'm not sure why that's there, so we'll move on from that. Uh, we've got one now for new capital gains tax rules for 2020. Um, I've done a video on capital gains tax changes, so that link will be appearing just above my head right now. Um, ultimately, the new rates are that the private residency relief, if you've lived in a property, is going to be hammered. Uh, so you were allowed to have 18 months of extra time when you left the property and you sold the property. So if you sold it within 18 months, you would not have any capital gains tax. Happy days. However, uh, H1C have now shortened that from 18 months down to nine months. And lettings relief, which is another uh, tax avoidance, is going to be pretty much scrapped. They're saying they've rewritten it, but uh, basically if you had a property that you lived in before, you then let the property out and then sold it, you could get both private residency relief or PRR and you could get lettings relief as well. Now lettings relief, just for speed here, was the lower of the gain made £40,000 in effect. Um, or the, sorry, start again. 
the legendary relief was the lower of the PRR, the gain itself, or £40,000. Typically, you're looking at the private residency relief, which is the lower of the, the three, typically. Um, but that's been scrapped. So you only get lettings relief and let it, if the tenant stayed with you at the time. Now, it's unlikely that's going to happen because what will happen is that you have a property which was your home, you vacate to buy a new home, and then you let the property out. Well, from April 2020, you will not be able to get the lettings relief because you lived out of the property, not at the same time the tenant lived with you. So letting relief for my money is being scrapped. They haven't said that because there'll be times when apparently you'll have a property which was your home, someone lived in with you, you stayed in the property a bit like a home share, and then you moved out the property. It's unlikely for most people, I have to say. But again, by association, which when I was doing this a long time ago, had written quite a few good articles, and they talk about private lettings relief, lettings uh, relief changes, and so on. There are some deductions as well for you to have, but again, the video link that I provided you previously will give you a synopsis of the things you can do and the things you can't do. Um, above my head right now will also be a calculator for you to use as well in terms of looking at CGT. Next article is again the Telegraph. Um, you know, someone would think I'm a fanboy of the Telegraph. Um, but this is an interesting one. So one author is saying, yes, go buy investments. And then another one will say, landlords urge to sell buy to let properties now before tax changes. And again, this is just citing the uh, capital gains tax charges that are changing and what that means to HMRC. So you pretty much will see the scrapping of reliefs as the video I previously described says. And you've also got a, a, the string of tax reforms, which we're talking about uh, section 24 in particular. And then we are also got so people being worse off. Well, clearly people are gonna be worse off. Uh, and it's really about how and when you sell a buy to let property. So if you can buy a property before April, 2020, and you lived in the property before, you will get a better tax deduction so make sure you do your planning and in fact i've done an article of uh, sorry a video on when you should sell your properties and that link should be appearing above my head as well um, so have a look at that in terms of what uh, the, the cgt impacts are by selling a prop buy to let property and we've got this other article by association, which says, beat the tax changes, more landlords are than ever using limited companies. And I would say our target market of the high rate taxpayers are indeed using limited companies to invest for buy to let properties. And it gives you some good ideas in terms of hints and tips, what you should do in their article. Um, and, you know, it talks about the professional sector now being a limited company. Above my head, by the way, there should be a link of should you use a limited company because of section 24. So feel free to explore that video to find out if you, as a landlord or buy to let property investor, should be using a limited company or not. Uh, finally, uh, oh, a couple of more actually to go. Uh, one, we've got the, the Guardian. Um, so the Guardian talks about how students can buy 400,000 homes, 400,000 homes, that'd be interesting, uh, can buy a 400,000 pound home with zero deposit, but it does cite, uh, and this is a great example. So as a high rate taxpayer, you may decide to buy a property and say, right, well, that property is yours and you can live in it and we'll collect all the money from your other students, we'll make some money. Well, the problem is with that, two things. One, you're going to be taxed on the profits made and section 24 will hurt you even more. Um, and then you are gonna pass that money on to your sibling anyway for them to live the life of luxury in their university days. Uh, I am, there's a riot of a smirk that I've got going on here. Um, but you know what I mean, the, the, your children will be uh, in student digs and they will ask you for money. That's just the way it is. Um, so you may want to consider, well, why don't you have the property? We'll be the guarantor, which is what this uh, article is saying from The Guardian. We will be the author and you can then have the home. The income that you generate from that property can be all yours 
and you stay away from me and my bank account. That's the bank of dad and mum. Um, so it, this it could be a way to mitigate uh, some of the tax burdens on you as an individual, but it's also getting them on the property ladder as well. And finally, 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 we've got another article by The Telegraph. I am, I apologize, apologies, I am not saying I am a great advocate of The Telegraph. It just so happens they write good articles. Um, and it talks about how landlords can escape the 100% uh, buy to let tax squeeze. Now, if you watch my section 24 video, which should be appearing above my head, you will see examples whereby people are not just passing all of their profits to HMRC, but it's only HMRC and the banks that win in certain, certain circumstances, and the poor landlord give away all of their profits and more for that point. So you kind of have £10,000 worth of profits, which you kind of want for yourself. You might have a current tax position as a high rate taxpayer of £40,000. Sorry, if you imagine £10,000 of profits, 40%, you might give £4,000, that's correct, uh, to HMRC. But that could increase to 150%, which means that if you make £10,000, you could give £15,000 worth of tax to HMRC. Go figure. Where's that coming from? Yes, indeed, your employment income. So you do need to be careful. And it does talk about some very effective ways of how to mitigate the whole thing. Uh, again, they talk about using a company structure, uh, converting your buy to let into a holiday home. And again, the holiday home is a great tax break because it's not affected by Section 24. You could become a long distant landlord. So have you thought about buying properties abroad? Or indeed, have you thought about buggering off to a different country? Um, or you can use an investment trust or take advantage of low rates. Low rates being refinancing your mortgages. So you pay less rates of interest. And that means the impact of Section 24, is, funny enough, is decreased. So that could be a good way of reducing your tax liabilities. Guys, that's it for this month. So this is November where I've been reviewing the news articles. I'll be back in December. So my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants. And this being the monthly roundup, I shall see you again next month. Many thanks.